Banksy Hill Detention Centre is basically hitting a breaking point. It is severely understaffed. There are increasingly extreme cases of self-harm and violence among detainees. And I talked about a letter that we managed to get our hands on. It was signed by officers who work there and sent to the Acting Corrective Services Commissioner. And in it, uh, the uh, officers talked about how they have to, uh, well, they basically risk their safety to provide the barest of services in an unsafe and inhumane workplace. It says that there's an extreme increase in the level of self-harm and suicidal ideations with one detainee having CPR applied and being revived on two different occasions. They talk about staffing levels being low, often below 50% of what's required. And in fact, the Department of Justice Director General confirmed that to us on Friday. Um, they also talk about the constant abuse and assaults from a cohort of detainees who are frustrated and angry at lockdown that can sometimes last several days. They also talk about the fact that they have to have more physical intervention um, when they're dealing with some incidents involving these detainees. And what they asked for, one of the things they asked for, apart from more staff and better pay, is moving some of these detainees into an adult prison. Well, I want to go to Ricky Hendon. Uh, she's been, uh, well, she represents um, the CSPSU, so the Civil Service Association. Um, she's the branch secretary there, and she obviously represents these workers. Uh, good morning, Ricky. Good morning, Nadia. Um, have you had a response to that letter that was sent on Friday? Yes, our members did receive a response and um, ultimately uh, they were not happy with that response, um, largely because it didn't accept their suggestions or offer alternate suggestions to alleviate the immediate crisis. It did talk about the medium to long-term work that's occurring to get the centre back on track, but what it didn't provide is a solution to the immediate crisis that the centre is facing. And, and, and you're asking for quite specific things and, and, and notably and interestingly, moving some of the detainees to an adult prison. Can you just expand on that? Uh, yes. So just um, for starters, just want to give some context to the letter, which is that the members were asked by the Commissioner to propose pre uh, potential solutions to the issues at the centre yep. and that's why they provided the letter. And they've been trying to be part of a solution on every occasion. Um, in terms of the suggestion uh, that a, tr a portion of the detainee population is transferred to an adult facility, um, that was to facilitate with the changing dynamics of the detainees and pro um, provide some additional resources um, to manage those detainees safely. Um, one of the issues that we have at the centre at the moment is that um, a large number of the cells uh, are damaged and can't be used. So there's a whole lot of the centre that is um, not usable uh, and that some of the parts of the centre uh, would be more easily managed if some parts of the detainee population were placed in different facilities. Um, we know from last week that there was discussion um, even at the judicial level that um, an adult facility may be safer than Bankshire Hill for some of the young people given the current scenario there um, with, the, the, with the low staffing and, um, and, the, and the current conditions. So uh, I think our members, um, you know, reflected on that and thought, well, maybe that is the case, that there is some greater safety in a proportion of that population being moved to an adult facility. So that would be a temporary thing, obviously, to facilitate these these repairs. And I imagine you're talking more about the older cohort, that sort of 16 to 18 age group? Uh, yes, that has, that has been one of the suggestions, that it is a, an older cohort um, that is transferred uh, and that uh, the... Uh, the youth custody officers that we represent, that they have some um, suggestions about maybe um, how that how that is managed and, and how that is targeted, because they've got um, a good idea about the detainee behaviour and the detainee needs. You also want um, uh, more staff and, and obviously some some proposals put in place to retain experienced staff and support the safe management of young people. Um, you also talk about better overtime rates, more pay. Um, can you tell me in regards to um, those safety issues that you've raised, what the department will do to, to try and improve that situation? We're in continued conversation with the department about this. What I can say at this point is that our members, uh, after receiving the response to their letter, they've de deliberated over the past 48 hours about what to do to protect their safety in the immediate term um, and have determined to enforce some safety measures. So that is particularly no staff left alone and a two to eight ratio. So that means that there is a, <coughs> excuse me, a minimum of two staff for every eight retainees or eight young people at any time in any part of the centre. So um, 
that, that in practice would mean that our members would be opening parts of the centre where they could practice that safe ratio um, at a time. So it might be that they roll through parts of the centre, opening those parts of the centre with that safe staffing ratio. So that's what they've determined on a safety basis um, that they, they can implement um, to open the centre safely under the current staffing limitations. Will that have some impact though on the running of, of that facility? Uh, I think the biggest issue is that the the running of the facility is already really deeply impacted by the lack of staffing. So, as um, you know, we've discussed before, there are already issues with being able to open the centre fully. Um, young people are experiencing ongoing uh, lockdowns, uh, and at least if there's it's done on a two to eight ratio basis and that rolls through the centre, at least where the parts of the centre that can be opened are opened, that they are done so in a manner that is safe for both the young people. Uh, and the staff at the centre. Uh, Ricky Hendon's my guest. She's the branch secretary of the Community and Public Sector Union at 16 to 11. It then sounds like operating it that way, it, it sounds like it's rolling lockdowns then. Is that a fair assessment of, of, of the, that is, what you're going to do? That is ultimately, um, as I understand it, the practical effect yeah. of running the two to eight ratio. However, the focus is on safety. So if there were more staff in the centre, um, then obviously more of the centre would be able to be opened. But the issue is about making sure that where parts of the centre can be opened, that they can be open, opened in a way that is safe for the young people and the staff. Is there um, going to be an our... issue with that though? Because even in this letter, Ricky, you talk about um, officers enduring constant abuse and assaults from a cohort of detainees who are yeah. frustrated and angry due to lockdowns that can sometimes last several days. And yet yeah. here you are proposing more lockdowns. I mean, is that just going to add fuel to the fire? Well, I guess what we're not proposing is ongoing lockdowns. I think what we're saying is that uh, lockdowns are already a consequence of the poor staffing of the centre. Uh, two to eight, we would prefer if it was a part of a suite of solutions, but this is the only part of the solution that our members have any direct control over. Um, the, ultimately, the responsibility for the safe running of the centre is the departments, uh, and it's really on them to come up with some of the solutions about how to get more staff into the centre. Our members have provided some suggestions about how to get and retain staff to stay in the centre, uh, but it's now up to the department to offer some solutions about how to alleviate that media crisis. Is the industrial action a possibility here at this stage, Ricky? Uh, we're in constant conversation with our members about what action is appropriate. Um, right now, their focus is on safety and taking uh, any measures that they're implementing are around uh, in, in being in line with occupational health and safety. So that is really their focus right now and that is the, the number one priority for our members uh, and the young people at the centre. All right, I'll leave it there. Look, thank you very much for talking to us this morning. Ricky Hendon there, she is the Branch Secretary of the Community and Public Sector Union.